I want to thank you all for your time today and for sending love from your heart to Dr. Elena. She's talking. My name is Jennifer Weigel. I am a journalist. I'm an author. Uh, so uh, jenweigel.com is where you can find information on me. And I, uh, the last five years, I was with the Chicago Tribune. And I actually am no longer with the Chicago Tribune because I was not able to tell the kind of stories that make my heart sing like this. Um, it's, there's a lot of fear in a lot of people when you talk about health and wellness and mind, body, spirit. And I think that's really unfortunate. Uh, I've spent the last several years interviewing a lot of MDs who have died and lived to talk about it. <laughs> okay, they call those near-death experiences. Of One of the more recent conversations was with a woman named Dr. Mary Neal who wrote the book To Heaven and Back. You might have heard of her. She was on Anderson Cooper, uh, orthopedic surgeon out of California, died in a kayaking accident, was without oxygen for 30 minutes, three, zero. So she's a miracle, right? And she says, I'm a woman of science. I couldn't make this up if you put a gun to my head. She came to the Chicago Tribune. I interviewed her. The Tribune wouldn't publish the story because they th said it was too weird that a doctor is talking about dying and coming back, but when she was in the light and no longer in her body, watching everyone trying to resuscitate her body from being in this kayaking accident, she got a very important memo. And she said that she saw that we are all connected. All of us, we're the same oriental rug. There's light, there's dark, but from way up there, it makes a beautiful pattern. When we're down there, when we're down here, we're like, oh, this hurts. I'm getting stepped on. This sucks. I'm snagged. But from up there, it's beautiful. And we need the light and we need the dark, but we are all connected. We are connected to that neighbor we think is crazy. We're all part of the same tapestry. Remember that at Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> same tapestry. I chose this tapestry. I can't believe I chose this tapestry, right? So what was I thinking? Exactly. So when she was up there and got the memo that we're all connected, she also heard that Everything that happens isn't good or bad. It just is, okay? Let's not go into victim mode. Why me? I watched my father die. I watched my mother-in-law die. I've watched people take their last breath. You go, why me? Woe is me. But she was dead, and it was nothing but love and connectivity. So even the worst possible thing that could happen, she says to me, think of Jesus. He was betrayed. He was killed. He was tortured. And thousands of years later, we're celebrating his name in love. Many of us are, if we're not killing over that name. So you think of that, that there is no good or bad. How do you know if you're stuck in traffic, you're not being prevented from the accident down the road? How do you know if your flight is delayed that maybe it's not about you? Maybe you're supposed to meet that person in the plane next to you and change their life. Or they're supposed to change your life. You are where you're supposed to be in every moment. That's what she said to me. Good, bad, indifferent, you are where you're supposed to be in every moment. So every day she says, since this near-death experience, she wakes up and she asks, in God we trust. Am I trusting? She thinks of the penny. Am I trusting that I am where I'm supposed to be in this moment? If I wake up and say, how shall I serve? I'm going to go forth and serve. That's it. The ego gets in the way and says, I know the GPS, babe. I know how to get there. But when you make a wrong turn out of your ego, you'll get where you need to go eventually but it's sort of like when you make a wrong turn and Siri is like, recalculating root. <laughs> you'll get there, but it just takes a little bit, okay? But if you trust, you'll get there. Trust in that GPS that they have a better view. They have a bird's eye view of that oriental rug. And this is the other thing Dr. Mary Neal told me, and this changed my life. She said, if you take a moment, like we took a moment in the sheets today, and those are for you, by the way, to keep writing down, holding the intention today of something you're grateful for, or holding the space for Dr. Elaine. If you take a moment to acknowledge those, what she calls coincidences, what we would call a coincidence. She says it's not a coincidence, it's something bigger. It's something bigger. Every time you go, that's weird. Like you were thinking about somebody and they call. Or you were wondering how you were gonna get so-and-so to figure out such and such, and then they call you with the answer. It's not weird, it's God, it's the universe, it's something bigger. And when you take a moment to acknowledge it, she said, if you write it in a journal for six months, it's almost like they're like, why goes on, quick, send more messages, send more messages. It's like they, they realize that you're connecting, you're acknowledging, you're thanking, and they come so often, she says, as a woman of science, you would not be able to explain the by the laws of probability how often it happens. 
So I ask all of you today, after you leave here and you will feel enlightened, to take note of those that's weird moments. Because after I met Dr. Elaine, I started seeing hearts in everything. I'm talking bird poop. Everything was heart-shaped to the point where it makes me laugh. I'm like walking in the parking lot, really, another piece of heart-shaped gum. Here we go. And I pull out my iPhone and I take a picture and I post it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. You, and I have a photo album of hearts that cannot be explained. I cut open a plum the other day, perfect heart. I'm like, dang, look at that. Didn't want to eat it. It was so pretty. So acknowledge those winks. They are not coincidences. They are bigger. And know this, that as you are sitting here, you can help the energy by radiating your smiling presence. So the heart is five times stronger than any other organ in your body. That's science. So breathe into your heart and radiate from your heart. It's like control, alt, delete with the computer. And send it to Dr. Elaine, and it will come back to you. Because whatever you send out that's good comes back to you as good. That's another thing Dr. Mary Neal told me. And since she died and stuff, I kind of believe what she said because she came back to tell me. So please note that your energy today matters, that your energy to every day matters, and that your resume doesn't matter as much as your heart, okay? <laughs> Jesus wasn't talking on the stump asking everybody if they worked for Google, okay? When you get up there, they aren't like, oh, wow, you ran four corporations. They were like, were you nice in your heart? Did you give love? That is what matters the most. So go to the heart. Know that when they can't see that smile, Olga just gave the best smile. Think of that smile and heart because if the camera comes on you and you're like, and then you're at home watching it and you're like, oh my God, I blew it. <laughs> you know that happy place that you go to? Like for me, it's a, <laughs> it's a video of my son sucking in helium for the first time. I know. Hi, mother of the year. How are you? But it was the funniest thing because he was like, ah, do you hear my voice? And then he started this belly laugh that he couldn't stop. And anytime I'm sad and I'm stuck in traffic or, you know, I'm dealing on hold with the Subaru dealership or whatever the heck it is, I think of my son laughing like that. So think of that happy thing that'll get you there into that smiling space so that you can hold the space for Elaine as she changes your life. And then you can be a messenger as you leave here and tell people. And that's what Dr. Mary Neal told me. She said, I was told I had to go back. She was kicked out of heaven. She was. I said, I have abandonment issues. I don't think there are enough therapists in the world that could help me if I were kicked out of heaven. Okay? I thought that was the inclusive spot. She was kicked out of heaven and told she had to come back and tell her story to anybody who would listen. Anybody. So that is your job today to tell Dr. Elaine's story to anybody who will listen. And it might just be one nugget, or it might be a thousand that you can't keep track of, and you need to get the transcript from Jana because there's so many you can't keep track, or you just get Dr. Elaine's book and you show it to people. But you can be messengers. You will be Jesus on the stump. Just keep going from stump to stump. Doesn't matter if you're waiting at the car dealership or filling up with gas or sitting in a restaurant. Be a messenger of good and wellness, and it will matter.